Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Sunday morning at First St. Paul's. My name is Alexa Hintz, and you're probably like, what are you doing up here today? Um, I get the lovely pleasure of filling in for Pastor Joel and for Pastor Chad while Chad celebrates Braden's graduation today, and Joel is out of town for a family um, event. So bear with me as I lead services, because this is my first weekend doing it by myself. <laughs> so... Um, I just, so like I said, want to welcome you guys today. Um, a couple of brief announcements. Um, this weekend is Pentecost. Uh, Pentecost, we celebrate the going out, the disciples going out and spreading the word of Jesus Christ. So today we have a special ser- uh, service for you guys. I have a few members from our um, senior high mission team going to talk about their experiences with mission and them going out and spreading the word of God. Um, so that's what the service is going to be about today. We have a video as well, so you'll see the screen come down. Um, the other good thing that I want to announce is First St. Paul's is looking for a part-time volunteer coordinator. Um, so if you know anyone looking for a part-time flexible job, please reach out to Chad Power or call the church office. Uh, we'd love to have any and everyone apply. Um, it should be a great little part-time job. Um, the, on the other side of that, you have our VBS sign-up. So if you know any little rugrats that want to go to VBS, there's a QR code for them to sign up um, online. Or if they're not wanting to do it online, parents can call the church office and we can sign you up that way. Um, Same goes for volunteers. If you feel like there's a week during the summer you want to hang out with kids and love on them a little bit, um, this is a great opportunity. So please scan the QR code to sign up. Uh, We need about 80 volunteers, so we're still looking for... a handful, a good handful of volunteers. So if you're feeling called to do so, please um, scan the QR code or call the church office as well. Um, some other good things to mark your calendars for are uh, the weekend of January. January, man, that's in a that's a long time away. Uh, no, July, July 19th and 20th, um, we are having the LCMC Heartland District. Um, gathering. Um, Friday, July 19th is just for pastors and church leaders. On July 20th, it is welcome to anyone and everyone in the congregations to come and attend. There is a $20 registration fee, um, but that's just so we can plan who's going to be here for food and all of that fun stuff. Um, Another thing happening on that same July 20th weekend, um, I don't know how many of you were here several years ago. I was not. Um, But there was a group called Spadazzo that came from Omaha, and it is a Christian ministry um, where the youth come and perform a program, and they perform in music and drama ministry um, for different churches, and they are coming, and they are going to be doing that here at First St. Paul's the weekend of the 20th and 21st of July. So mark your calendars. Um, It should be an eventful weekend. Um, And last announcement, our God Made Me Preschool has um, open enrollment, so if you know anyone looking for preschool, um, we do have openings in all of our classrooms, Um, so have them call out to First St. Paul's, and we can get them signed up and registered for... um, for that. And I don't have the rest of my bulletin. (laughs) Give me a second. Where did it go? Perfect. Uh, If you guys want to rise and um, we'll share the peace. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share the peace with those around you. Good morning, Jordan. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. morning. All right. We'll continue with our uh, confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, and the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Drawn to Christ and seeking God abundance, let us confess our sins. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? 
Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life in the world we were I mean. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. If you will please open your hymnals, our opening hymn is number 396, Spirit of Gentleness.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Please join me in the prayer of the day found in your bulletin. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones, and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us this spirit, transform us by your truth, and give us language to proclaim your gospel through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. The first reading this morning is from Ezekiel 37, 1 through 14. You can find it in the Pew Bibles on 704 and 705. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with its skin, and you be and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and the skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, 
Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breathe, and breath upon the, uh, the slain, and that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost, but we cut off completely. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open up, open your graves and bring you up from the graves. O oh, my people, I will bring, back, bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from the graves. O oh, my people, I will put the spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Here ends that reading. Please look at the insert in your bulletin for Psalm 104, verses 24 to 34, and we'll read it responsibly. How many are your works, Lord? In wisdom you made them all. There is sea, vast, vast, and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond number. There the ships go to and fro. All creatures look to you. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you send your spirit, they are created. May the Lord, may the glory of the Lord endure forever. I will sing to the Lord all my life. May my meditation be pleasing to him. The second reading is found in Acts 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of violent wind. And it filled the house, the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every people under the heavens living in Jerusalem. And at the sound of the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in their native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Perthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Philadelphia, Egypt, and other parts of Libya belong to Serene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Abit, Arabs in their own language. We hear them speaking about God's deed of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and answered them, Fellow Jews and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. 
Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portent in heaven above, and signs on earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on my name of the Lord shall be saved. Here ends the reading. Please rise for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John. Our gospel reading is from John chapter 15, verses 26 through 27, and chapter 16, verses 4 through 15. You can find them in your pew, find this on your pew Bible in pages 878 to 879. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify to, testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. But I have said these things to you so that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you about them. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to, you, to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the, word, prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer, and about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will, he will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Our next hymn is hymn number 661, I Love to Tell the Story.
seated, and children, come on up for the children's sermon. All right. Perfect. How many of you think you're really good at being told when you're told something that you'd follow? Like if you're told to like do something, how many of you listen? And are you really good at listening? I'm guessing by those blank stares, there's some questionable times that we're not always listening. So how many of you think you're really good at Simon Says? All right, you guys stand down here and let's play a game of Simon Says. Let's see how good you can listen and follow directions. All right. Simon says, jump up and down. Simon says, hop on one foot. Pat your head and rub your belly. Oh, Simon didn't say. Simon says, sit down. Simon says, stand up. Simon says, sit down. Stand up. Oh, good job. How about if I say, Simon says, go find someone in the congregation and tell them Jesus loves them. It can't be your mom or dad. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Good job. So, in today's story, we're going to be t- learning about going out and doing and telling people Jesus loves you. But, because Jesus told us to do so, right? So, just like Simon says, Jesus says that we need to spread the good word. So, I encourage all of you to go up to a stranger today that is not mom, dad, or family related or siblings, because I saw you with Peyton, (laughs) and tell them Jesus loves you today, okay? Can you guys do that today? Perfect. All right, you guys can, Simon says sit down. All right, we're going to pray, and then you guys can go back to your seats. Dear God, thank you, oh yeah, you guys can repeat after me, I'm not good at this. Dear God, thank you for giving us direction. I know we don't always listen, but we promise we'll do better. In your son's name, amen. All right. You may get your suckers. I replenished it just for you guys today. Perfect. Good job. Way to go, Chuck. All right. So we're going to lead into our sermon, and I'll have Craig take it away. Good morning. I am Craig Couts. I'm the old man of mission trips. And I am a witness of the Holy Spirit. No, I was not in Jerusalem when the uh, apostles first received that, even though some of the kids probably think I'm that old. I will tell you, I felt the Holy Spirit this morning when Jennifer sang the Kyrie. Did you? Because the Holy Spirit's here. And I will tell you, I'm a witness of the Holy Spirit and perhaps such an advocate of mission because I see the Holy Spirit descend upon your kids each and every time that I've ever gone with them someplace. Now this morning you're going to hear from uh, Hannah Cool. I watched the Holy Spirit descend on her as she spoke to a homeless person in Puerto Rico. I got a feeling she's going to tell you more about that. I saw the Holy Spirit descend upon Kennedy Montague as she was in tears uh, with the Abelite people uh, on the last day that we were going to see them, like so many of the missionaries that worked with the Abelite people. And then I'm going to tell you, I saw the Holy Spirit uh, descend upon Emma Schroeder as she lifted a ton of mud over her head and threw it over the side of the wall in Jamaica. Now, you might not think that's the Holy Spirit, but it was still an impressive act by her. And she's always someone who I see the Holy Spirit with each and every day of her life. Now, the last mission we went on, uh, we're going to show you a video of, and then the kids are going to talk. And they're the, they're the most important uh, people to talk this morning. But let me just set this up a little bit with you. The last mission we went on was to Lutheran Valley Retreat in Colorado. It's actually a camp. Uh, for kids and all kinds of people. It runs all summer long. Our job at this camp was basically to help disabled, uh, developmentally disabled adults have a camp experience. 
We take that for granted, perhaps, but there's lots of people in the world that really can't have the camp experience like our kids could or like I could or like maybe you could. And so our job was actually just to help them uh, that week to, to live a life of, of joy and happiness at this camp. So enough said by me. Heaven help this church if we don't always and continuously in the future support youth mission. Okay, because it's one of the most powerful things we do. If, if, if our mission is united, we live uh, the will of Christ. Mission is how we do it. So I'll shut up. Thank you. You look excited. First year we did it, it was a gentleman who couldn't stand and walk on his own. And he rode a horse, and his mom just said, my son's riding a horse, and that sealed it. That's when every year we need to figure out how to make this work. We want this camp to be accessible for everyone. Camp is really important because it's an opportunity to see what you're really capable of. You nervous? Yeah. We have some people who thought they couldn't zip line, and they ended up zip lining twice or three times. And some people thought they couldn't ride horses, and they got on the horse and rode the horse. Did you get any in there, John? Oh, nice. Nope. It really allows them to see that they're made in God's image and they're capable of so many things. Oh, oh, I've seen God's work in its full glory. I've seen people, what I would call, living without borders. Chris, he's a guy in a wheelchair and he gets to do the zip line. Are you nervous? I asked him that earlier and he typed no. Normally when kids go down, they're like, oh, I get to do this, yay. But when Chris goes down, he's going fast. His hands are raised, he's smiling from ear to ear, and he just is happy. He gets to feel like a normal adult. It makes me happy every time. Oh, man. <laughs> JoJo, who seems severely compromised in her posture, she's sort of hunched over all the time. She got on a horse yesterday and she sat upright, perfect posture, riding that horse around. It's just wonderful. When I first arrived, Nathan puts his hand to his chest and he starts the national anthem, Oh Say Can You See. I asked the group to join me in singing the national anthem in honor of Nathan. And uh, so we, we did that. place for everybody just to learn and grow with each other here. Just knowing that you're not alone in your struggles and God has a purpose for us. You are God's greatest creation. I'm having a good day. I'm glad. <laughs> experience, you really can't describe it. What you walk away with when you leave you leave fulfilled, you leave blessed. You do leave a little bit tired, uh, but you leave with a total sense of, I was part of that. You don't want to leave this place. It definitely has an impact on you in the end. It's impacting lives. My life, the kids' life, the staff's life, and the camper's life. Um, it's just a win, 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 win. I wasn't going to come out first because I don't make friends very well, but I made friends and I got a friendship bracelet. You only have one life, so you got to face your fears and don't let them take over your life. It's life changing coming here. Give us a week and lives can change.
Okay, um, my name is Emma Schroeder, and I guess it's my turn to talk now. Um, if you've ever had the opportunity to go on mission, do it. Pray on it, of course. Ask God if that's what he wants you to do. But it has been my experience that he will tell you to go. videos made me cry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> mission is one of the cornerstones of my faith. I've been going on mission. Sorry. <laughs> I've been going on mission every summer since 2017, minus one. So that will be seven trips in eight years which feels like a lot. I think part of the reason I like to go on missions so much is because during the school year, I get so caught up in school and work and all my extracurriculars that I forget to spend time with God. When you're on mission, you automatically feel closer to God. And one thing that stuck with me and that I will tell every single person who's ever been on mission with me it's something that Pastor Andrea told me. Well, she told us, when you're on mission, you are on a mountaintop. You feel close to God, and it's easy to see how he's working in the world. It's when you're in the valley, when you're not on mission, when you're going about your life day to day, that's when looking for God, seeing how he's working, and spending time with him is really important. College is hard. I'm three years in, I have one more to go, um, and college will challenge your faith. Especially coming from a good church culture, such as this one, people will say you're crazy for wanting to sleep on concrete floors, shower in rivers, and work with people who don't speak the same language as you. They might say things like, you're a colonizer or something else along those lines. It's so, so important to remember that when you're on mission, the main purpose of going is for us to be volunteers for Christ. We're going just to be kind to people, just to do the work that needs to get done. And it's the Holy Spirit's job to touch their hearts and to make them believe. All we have to do is show the love and kindness of God through our actions. Seeing God in everyday life gets easier as you practice it more. I wasn't really good at it until we went to LVR for the first time. That trip was really when I figured out how God talked to me. The stuff he's been telling me has been consistent since then. Sorry. I see him in people most of the time. Knowing what they've been through and how God has helped them overcome. And now I can see him in myself whenever I feel like I'm far away from God. I just remember what he's done for me, what had to happen to get me to where I am today. And I try to live every day showing the love and kindness of God to everyone that I meet. In three days, um, I'm going to go to Lutheran Valley Retreat for the whole summer. Um, I'm going to be serving as camp counselor, and it is so, I'm so excited, and I'm so scared. <laughs> It's so easy to just decide to dedicate one week of your summer to go on mission. And it's really hard to commit to either a full summer, and it's even harder to live out every single day like you're on top of that mountain. Um. I can't explain why God told me to do it. 
He's been telling me to do this sort of thing for a long time. Um, I can't ever see myself not doing mission, not going on trips every summer or doing this sort of thing. Um, I don't know. This is just something that I feel like I'm called to do. And um, the church's support for mission really helps, and it really makes it easier. So, yeah. Keep supporting us on mission. Keep praying for us when we're gone. Um, and keep praying that more and more people get to experience mission. Yeah, okay, I'm done. <laughs> Hi, my name is Hannah Cool, and I think mission is a soft spot for all of us because it brings so many emotions, mostly good emotions, but mission is hard. And about four years ago, I didn't go to church a lot. And then I started coming here, and then I really found my love for God and how much he really meant to me. And so back in summer 2022, Puerto Rico was my first mission trip, and I didn't know what to expect. I really just let God take it instead of planning certain things to happen. And on mission, we did so many amazing things, from painting to building gardens, and to the moment I will never forget, feeding the homeless. So I would like to share about the guy named Ferdinand that changed my life. When we arrived, there were so many people. A lot of them spoke English, so that's where people automatically floated to to talk to. But I didn't. I noticed Ferdinand sitting in, the cor in a corner on a bench alone. I went to go sit by him, give him food, and attempt to talk to him when I realized he didn't speak English. I continued to sit with him because I didn't want him to be alone, and I realized how much he needed someone just to sit by. And suddenly, a huge shout out to the pastor at the Puerto Rican church who came over and asked if he could translate and talk so I could talk to him. When I was able to talk to him, I learned so much about him. He told me his story, and Ferdinand was left homeless from the hurricane, and, sorry, <laughs> he was left homeless from the hurricane, and that's when he, he didn't have anything. He was left with no house, no clothes, anything. And so learning that, I just automatically gained, gained a soft spot for him. And he told me more about his life, about his family, and about how the, I was the first person he's told his story to, and the first person he's talked to in a while. After speaking to him, we had to leave, so I gave him a hug, and, but he had one last thing to tell me. So pastor translated for me when he was said I was like the daughter he never got to have. I was immediately grateful, and I knew I was brought to him for a reason to hear his story. And after I realized how much I enjoy Mason, spreading the word of God, and how much a single guy could impact you without even knowing it, and for the for LVR last year, one of them one of the guys really stood out to me. His name was Charlie, and he was he was a quiet guy, but he always would tell me stories about anything and always would give me advice. And I would go in, out into the pasture and just sit with him and talk to him because that's all he needed was someone to sit and talk to. So I appreciate Mission for giving me so many opportunities to find my faith closer to God and just getting to meet all of these amazing people that impact your life so amazingly. Thank you. Kennedy, and I have been fortunate enough to go on three mission trips, and I'll go on my fourth at the end of July. For mission, I have gone to LVR in Colorado twice, and Rincon, Puerto Rico once. My first mission was in 2021 in Colorado. 
While the mission team was there, we helped rebuild the trails. We worked many hours up in the Colorado mountains and spent our nights worshiping by the campfire. When I returned, I got back into the routine and started to stray away from worshiping. My second mission was in Puerto Rico, where we helped paint a house for an older woman, feed the homeless, and picked up trash. We also did some more hurricane relief while we were there. Our time there was filled with devos and singing by the ocean's waves. Again, when I returned, I got back into the rhythm of life, forgetting about keeping up with my faith. On mission, our leaders try to explain to us how important it is for us to stick with our faith as we return home and not stray away. But I've always struggled with this. I get so busy and don't focus on my faith like I do when I'm on mission, and I'm sure I'm not the only one who experiences this. On my, fourth, on my third mission trip, we went back to LVR. To be honest, I wasn't very excited to return there. I didn't want to work hard or give up my phone. Saying, but saying this now, but saying this now sounds silly, but it's the truth. However, my thoughts were very wrong. Last year's mission was an eye opener for me. And while there, we worked with the Able Light campers. And this type of mission might not sound like typical mission, but it's truly the best kind. My mission, team, my mission team got to watch the campers do activities they might not have ever thought they could, like riding a horse or climbing a mountain. We got to give them a kind of hope and thankfulness towards our Lord. Watching this experience was absolutely amazing. It showed me a new way of thinking about my faith. Since I've returned from Colorado, there isn't a day I go by without thinking of the campers and the experiences I got to be a part of. As we start planning our next year's mission, I'm excited for the opportunities for the team in Puerto Rico, but I'm also excited about what comes afterwards for me and my faith. Thank you. Can you hear me? Is it on? Okay, there it is. So I won't keep you much longer just because I know that's, um, it was about the kids. But the big thing I want you guys to know is that every time I watch that Able Light video, I just start cr crying. Um, very similar to Emma, it's just a really impactful video for not only the kids, but for me. Um, and I think it's important for you as a congregation to see, you know, we can come back and tell you all about our experiences, but you never get to hear it but from the people that we touch and we interact with. And I think that is a great video to see the joy and the light that these kids bring to other people and how proud I am of them because they truly are an amazing group of kids that we have at First St. Paul's and I am so upset that I don't get to be continuing on with them um, coming in the fall. And the other thing I just want to touch base on with you, you know you as a congregation and you know sometimes I hear it from other people that oh, the kids are just going on a vacation, or oh, it's just a trip that the kids can go on, and you, you know, you, you don't understand, but mission isn't just going to try to help fix things for other people. It's not about, you know, making ourselves feel good, and you know, because we got to help those less fortunate. Mission is working alongside people and building those relationships, and mission is truly relational. Um, and I think it was very apparent in all the stories that you guys hear, um, that the lives that these kids touch, and that's what, that's what brings them back, and that's what keeps them going. Um, um, one of the gals that you see in there who mentioned the friendship bracelet, Jersey Deeker is the one that gave her the friendship bracelet, and it made her weak. Um, Chris, the gentleman, still for a while was contacting Aaron Deeker and calling him just to talk and say hello. And um, the other gentleman that you see on there, Kelly, um, was a camper back when I was a counselor at LVR. So I've got to see Kelly go from a 20-something year old young man to now a, I don't even know how old he is now, but I, just to see him continue to grow and be touched by those that work with him is just phenomenal. Um, so, and I'm so proud of Emma for going to LVR because LVR really is a life-changing experience. And I worked there for three summers in college and I will recommend it to any and everyone to go and have that experience because camp is important and mission is important and relationships are important. So I just want to thank you as a congregation to continue to support these children, I don't know how many kids, young adults, young women and men in this congregation. Um, so I just thank you for your continued support um, for these kids and I hope that you guys can become as proud of them as I am. 
So um, with that, if you guys wouldn't mind standing for our next hymn, our hymn number is 668, O Zion Haste. Please join me in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the offering.
Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. In the power of the Spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all people according to their need. Holy and gracious Spirit, like the air around us, we almost take you for granted, even though we can't live or breathe except you move in us. Thank you for blowing where you will even when we don't notice you. Renew our life, faith, and love now and always. Merciful God, renew your church, fill it with boldness in witnessing to Jesus. Fill it with faithfulness in proclaiming his word and celebrating his sacraments. Fill it with zeal for ministering to all people in his name. Merciful God, renew the people in the ministry of this congregation. Fill us with joyfulness in worship, eagerness in service, gentleness in fellowship, generosity in giving, and persistence in faithful witness in Jesus' name. Merciful God, renew the minds of worldly leaders. Fill their hearts with wisdom and humility as they wield power and authority. Fill the spirits of all people with love for God, neighbor, and the world around them. Fill creation with fruitfulness and peace. Merciful God. Renew the hope, faith, and health of all those whose need is great. Today we remember Al Gurloff and Willa Rundle. Fill them with the comfort of your presence and lead them into the joy of your salvation. Merciful God. Come, Holy Spirit, and cheer the hearts of all who grieve the loss of loved ones. Fill them and all of us with faith in you, the Lord and giver of life. In the communion of saints in heaven and on earth, in the forgiveness of sins, in the resurrection of the body, and in life everlasting. Merciful God, grant us, Lord, all that is fulfilling to your will, to your glory, and for the building up of your people. Please join in the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Please join in our closing hymn number 400, God of Tempest, God of Whirlwind.
Go in peace. You are the body of Christ.